Good morning. For the diseases and medical conditions that seem impossibly complex or impossibly expensive to treat, researchers believe that stem cells hold the key to solving them. So for cancers, tumors, degenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and MS, and even spinal and brain disorders, doctors have wrestled with how stem cells can be applied to damaged areas and how those new cells would teach the body to heal itself. In the United States, the first attempts at stem cell therapy involved the use of human fetuses. It seemed in the beginning that those stem cell therapies were working, such as in a study of Parkinson's patients. But later, researchers discovered that the patients who received fetal stem cell implants showed no improvement over patients who received placebo and 15% of the patients showed symptoms that were far worse than expected, serious involuntary movements. Researchers moved on and discovered other stem cell sources that worked much more effectively and without the side effects that come from fetal tissues. MSCs were discovered decades ago, but it was only after the failure of fetal cells that researchers used these cells widely in clinical applications. These types of stem cells have lots of advantages. First, they can differentiate into many other kinds of cells. They can self-renew, and they can be instructed to go to specific areas of the body. For example, they can go to where the patient has suffered significant injury or trauma, or to disease or cancerous organs. Once there, those cells recruit other ones to fix the problem. The most common ways to get these MSCs are from the patient's bone marrow or from fat, which may be invasive and painful procedures, or from umbilical cord tissues, which are typically donated by someone else. The top Chinese labs are doing research now with the umbilical cord stem cells, and these have enormous advantages over stem cells that come from the bone marrow. Umbilical cord stem cells are young, obviously, and they have not been exposed to disease or to aging. That makes them much more adaptable. They have a far lower incidence of genetic defects, which tend to manifest themselves later in life. Cord stem cells are less likely to be rejected by the patient, which means that there is a far larger pool of donors available compared to adult stem cells. Umbilical cord cells are able to treat many conditions, whereas stem cells that come from a patient's bone marrow or fat are limited to that patient's own medical history and the quality of the cells themselves. Umbilical cord stem cells are ethically non-controversial and they're more readily available. Scientists understood from the beginning that stem cells are the next frontier in medicine but they realized eventually that embryonic and fetal stem cells just didn't work, besides having a lot of ethical and moral questions that surrounded their use. So the focus shifted to the umbilical cord stem cells. What happened next is all too familiar to us. Once the science settled in on the umbilical cord stem cells as being the most promising, China's policymakers and research went all in. They built an entire industry around it and nobody outside China really noticed until lately. In 2023, these top researchers found out by accident that China was doing many more therapies than anyone else had imagined. And China built biobanks full of umbilical cords that could be used later, either by the patient or donated to others. They spent a year crunching the numbers and realized that China was far ahead of everyone else. This table here is a good summary. In 2023, China recorded 9 million live births. India was the top of the world, growing by 24 million. The United States had 3.6 million babies born. And it seems on the surface that China is collecting more umbilical tissue than the US by virtue of its larger population. 270,000 umbilical cords were banked in China compared to 100,000 in the United States. But it's the bottom number that shocked these researchers. China's not just locking up their umbilical tissues, they're using them right away in clinical applications. 10,000 patients per year 
compared to just 450 per year in the United States. This report is from a conference in Guangdong province. They discussed how their labs were using umbilical cord stem cells on leukemia, autism, brain damage, and immune diseases. As of January 2025, China had about half of the world's treatments using umbilical stem cells to date. 40,000 cases out of 85,000. The possibilities are huge and the FDA is approving some Chinese companies for trials of drugs that are derived from umbilical stem cells for drugs that can be sold in the United States. XL Smart is going after Parkinson's, ALS, and spinal cord injuries. If these trials go well, those therapies may be ready for the American market in about 10 years. But patients in China are not waiting on our FDA. They're being treated now. This stem cell research clinic here is in Shenyang, in Liaoning province. These reports are from that clinic, which my group visited in April. This report is a major departure for me, honestly, because I don't understand really any of it. And if you have any questions or want any of the research here, or you're seeking medical advice or help for yourself, just send me an email and I'll make sure that the right people get it. Also, this video is different because we usually wait on a story for Bloomberg or Reuters to put a story together that we can link to. But in this case, nobody outside China is aware that this is even going on. These researchers here, remember, they're experts in their field, and they had no clue what the Chinese were up to. This facility in Shenyang is the most developed in-country for stem cell research and clinical testing and patient treatment. Over a thousand trials, numerous patents and national awards, advanced treatments for diabetes, lupus, psoriasis, arthritis, autism, epilepsy, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, stroke, brain injury, liver disease. The director of this facility is Dr. G, the doctor here in these photos. Here is her bio. The Chinese language doesn't have gender, so the translator defaults to he, even though she's a woman. So this is all about her. And this photo here was taken right after I asked her again to please explain what a stem cell is. This photo here in the clinic brochure is from 20 years ago. This was her in her office at University of Chicago. That's where she spent four years and where she did her postdoc. That building, that equipment, that team of doctors and all this research, they could have been in Chicago. Patients could be flying in right now from all over the world to get the most modern medical treatments there in Chicago. But patients are coming to Shenyang instead and they'll be coming to Shenyang for the next hundred years. When we talk about brain drain, this is what I mean. It means that China owns this industry now. And that much I do understand. This is the marina in Sanya, Hainan province. Be good.